spiritual spouse or sex in the dreams. Now, first and foremost, I want to make a, um, a warning that this is heavy content and it's also for adults. So if you are having children here, I would not encourage you to continue to watch it because some of the things that I might share might be a little bit graphic. Now, as a person who in ministry that does deliverance, we came across that many times of praying for somebody who claimed to have a demon, have sex with them during the night. Sometimes people who even have children in the spirit realm but who cannot have children in the physical, who have no affection between their husband or their wife and some who cannot even get married. Including stories where um, a person would feel something raping them or some, something has a violent sex with them, not only in the sleep, I remember even uh, knowing or hearing about a person, an encounter where she went to the mall and something was taking control of her physical body. This demon was torturing her by having sex with her in the mall. And so now this may seem bizarre, far-fetched for some of you, like this is completely crazy, but this is not new. Almost every person who does deliverance will tell you that they came into an encounter with somebody that they prayed for deliverance in this area. Now is it biblical? Does Bible talk about? Let's take a, let's take a look. In Isaiah chapter 34 verse 14, it says, The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with jackals, and the wild goat shall bleed to its companion. Also the night creature shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. A night creature. Now in your Bible, if you're reading that, it will have a little, foot, a little thing on the top of that night creature and then if you look below in the footnotes, it will say Lilith. Night creature. Now in most of the religions of this world, they had these demons, they call them incubus and succubus, where this male demon or male entity that will come in the sleep and have sex with women and this female entity that will come and have sex with men. Seduce them, sometimes steal their children and so there was a lot of myths that were going on both in Jewish culture and in other cultures but these are not myths. These are realities of things that people are battling with and people are struggling with. We see that in book of Genesis chapter 6 that spiritual entities, the sons of God, and I believe, like many people believe, that this is not, sons of God are not necessarily the descendants of Seth. But sons of God, these, these are the angels, these are people who were part of God's divine counsel, people who were a part of God's team, God's, you know, part of the hosts. They started to come on the earth and they started to make love to women. They started to um, have physical relationships with women. And Jude tells us, the half-brother of Jesus tells us that because they crossed these boundaries God has set for these sons of God, these spirits, then God eventually punished them and He locked them up in the prison. Now, it's possible for evil spirits, for demonic spirits to be able to have this kind of a sexual relationship. Spirits can take on a physical form. We see that um, angels can take on a physical form. They can walk, they can talk, they can eat, they can have their feet washed. And we see the same thing with demons is they can also take on a spiritual form. These spiritual entities would come and have sex with women and there will be an offspring that will be produced. These giants, these Nephilim that will be produced. Now this thing continues today where demons have sex with people. Now. Not necessarily that physical children are produced, but they impregnate these people with spiritual perversion. They impregnate this person with spiritual confusion. The offspring of these encounters, they last through the day. Sometimes they destroy relationships, they destroy marriages, and they destroy a person's peace and ability to function. Because Satan's ultimate goal is to bring restlessness and to disconnect you from God and from other people. Now, even St. Augustine in the City of God book, he mentioned, um, and I'm going to quote, There is also a very general rumor. Many have verified by their own experience and trustworthy persons have collaborated the experience told by others. That salvans and fawns, commonly called incubi, have often made wicked assaults upon women. So meaning these incubus and 
succubus. The incubus is pretty much comes from the Latin word a nightmare induced by a demon. It takes a form of a man and it makes love to a woman. And succubus, it's pretty much similar word. It takes a form of a woman to have sex with men. And sometimes as in Isaiah we see it's the creature of the night, the night creature, the, the, the demon of Lilith that comes in and has these intercourses with the person during the sleep and torments them as well through that and causes division, restlessness and lack of peace. Now these spiritual sexual spirits or spirits that cause this thing in the sleep, they can molest and torment individuals. A lot of times they can also cause wet dreams and orgasm. They create a personally, they cause a person to be emotionally drained because it's like a spiritual rape. And this dream sex can be so intense and actually in some cases it could be addictive. This dream state results in sexual orgasm, it followed by guilt and a lot of times condemnation and accusation. These evil spirits they delight in inflicting pain, fear and mental anguish. And a lot of times people can get, cannot get married or their marriages end up in divorce or they have no affection or they have no um, sex drive for their spouse. Now I'm not in any way saying that if you're battling with any of these things that I just mentioned that it must be that but if you have something that comes to you at night and something that takes on the face of someone else and has sex with you in the sleep and this continues regularly. You're battling, you're struggling with wet dreams and you're waking up and you feel like, man, I just had an orgasm in, in the sleep and this is something that is repeated. And you're watching also pornography or you're battling with lust or other things. You're dealing with the spirit that is very common and almost every person that I know that does deliverance has one time or another dealt with this in delivering people from demons and once the people were delivered, all of this nonsense, nonsense stopped. The married folks, a lot of times they would find their love and affection for each other and those who are not married, many times God will bring them to marriage because these demons would hold them back because the de these demons are very jealous of you being with somebody else. They're almost like attached themselves and they're very jealous of you being with somebody else. Now, they usually can come from five sources. One of them is witchcraft witchcraft spells, potions, love potions and other curses of lust. It's when somebody casts a spell on you, maybe somebody who wants to be with you or somebody that you broke their heart or they wanted to be with you but they couldn't and so they go to, to a witch doctor or they go to a wizard and they cast spells upon you and they cast all kinds of potions, um, love potions on you and then as a result you start having these bizarre experiences where these demons now do not allow you to enjoy love relationship with anybody else. The second open door to these sex demons and to these spiritual spouses is through sexual sin. Fornication, pornography, adultery, bestiality, homosexuality, lesbianism or any other acts, sexual acts including viewing and consuming pornography. They open doors for these sex demons. These demons have an intense appetite for perversion. They have a huge unsatisfiable appetite for sexual perversion and sexual immorality. It's almost like they feed off of that. But sexual sin is an open door for spirit spouse. Number three is they're generational. In some cases these demons passed on through the bloodline. These demons because of previous generations you know had something that had to do with witchcraft or it had something to do with um, sexual perversion or rape or molestation or human sacrifice that these demons go from one generation to another until somebody rises up and says enough is enough. It was running in the family until it ran into me and puts a stop to that and breaks its grip over their life and over their future generations. Number four is this demon can also enter through abuse and molestation. Perversion attaches itself to the person and then the person becomes a victim. And then yes, it's not their fault but because of that act of abuse, because of that act of molestation, this demon, he doesn't play fair but he saw that abuse as an open door and he enters into that person and destroys that person's life. I remember praying for we were, we were ministering to one girl who was bound by a demon of lesbianism that entered through molestation. 
somebody in her family molested her, um, one of the uncles, and after that this demon entered her. Now, humanly looking at that, you're like, but that's demon should enter the guy who did it. Well, the demon didn't need to enter that guy. The guy already had a demon, otherwise he would never do that. But when he had that physical contact with that person, you know, not only that is a penetration and intercourse, it's also a transference of a spirit because demons get transferred through sex. There's no condom that can protect you from a demon and especially through abuse. It's that weak point where demons enter and the person needs to find healing and the person needs to find also deliverance so that anything they got attached to them can be broken off, especially a spirit spouse. And the last open door is soul ties. And there's, I have another video that deals with soul ties, what they are, godly soul ties, ungodly soul ties and how to break soul ties. It's when you had maybe even not a, even a physical relationship but a strong emotional, this like very codepe very dependent relationship on somebody else and this person walked away from your life and what's left now is your soul is broken into fragments. Like it says in Psalm, it says that the enemy like a lion walks in and he wants to tear your soul to pieces and the enemy takes advantage of that weak point and he comes in as that spirit spouse and begins to bring torture and begins to bring torment and a lot of times rape and orgasm and, and all of this stuff and just confuses your mind, causes you restlessness and then you're not able to function really well and you're affected by that all the time. What do you do if you're battling with that? Maybe you're watching this right now and you're being attacked by the spirit spouse. You're being attacked by this demon, this sex demon. What do you do? Let me share with you just a few practical pastoral advices and somebody who believes in the ministry of deliverance. I believe that God can set you free. But number one, I want you, you need to devote your life to Jesus Christ. Why? Because first and foremost, when your life, not just praying, praying a sinner's prayer, but I'm talking about devoting your life to Jesus Christ. Your body then becomes His real estate. When you devote your life to Jesus Christ, your spirit becomes His headquarters. Number two is you have to declare your body as the real estate of the Holy Spirit. Not only devote your life to Jesus but declare your body as something that belongs to the Lord. You, you, you're like this mobile temple of the Holy Spirit. You're this you know portable temple of the Holy Spirit. You have to declare that to the enemy. You have to declare that in the spirit realm that I am a property, a real estate bought by the blood. I belong to the Lord. Number three is renounce the spirit of incubus and succubus. Renounce the spirit spouse. Renounce this sex demon. Just, just renounce it. Just break its grip over your life. You have the authority in the name of Jesus. Number five, abort anything that they plant or number four, abort anything that they planted in you. What happens sometimes is this demon when it has sex with you, it plants in you confusion. It plants in you like this seed that then grows up into be a Nephilim, aka Nephilim. Like they become like these confusions in your life. You might not give birth to real children but you're going to give birth to perversion. You're going to give birth to lust. You're going to give birth to defeat. You're going to give birth to broken relationships. You're going to give birth to divorce. So what you want to do is you want to abort anything that they planted. Anything that was planted in that nightmare, anything that was planted in that sleep, abort it, uproot it. The Bible says that anything that's not been planted by my father, will be uprooted. Uproot that by your confession, by your declaration. And the last thing is seek deliverance if this thing continues. If it's a repeated thing, you prayed the prayer, you renounced, you aborted and it still continues. Come for prayer line, come for deliverance, seek deliverance from your pastor or somebody who does deliverance. Ask him to pray for you so that God can completely deliver you in Jesus name. Now a little word of uh, something on the side. Just because you've had maybe an attack one time or it happened like one time or, or something, it does not mean that you have a demon. I'm referring to people who are having this on consistent and regular basis. Okay, so just because Satan came one time and he threw, you know, a curveball in your sleep and did something like that, it does not mean that you have a demon. The same way that if God comes in your sleep during the night and gives you a vision and a dream, it does not mean that you have the Holy Ghost. Nebuchadnezzar, Pharaoh and all of these people had God show up and give him honestly a very clear prophetic picture. It did not mean that they had the Holy Ghost. And so just because you get attacked, it does not mean that you have a demon. But if this is repeated, if this is constant, if this is regular my friend, that it smells like a demon, it sounds like a demon and you need deliverance and God 
is out there to deliver you and to set you free so that you can sleep and the Bible says to His beloved He gives sleep. God wants you to enjoy physical relationship with the spouse physically, not in some kind of fantasy realm and not with some kind of other entity. Sex is meant between a husband and a wife, not between a man and a demon, not between a woman and a demon. God does not want you to be connected sexually with another realm. He wants you to be connected physically, intimacy. Leave your husband, leave your father and your mother, cleave to your wife and become one flesh and that is physical. That's not in the spirit realm, that is not with another entity, that is not with Lilith, that's not with the spouse demon, that's not with incubus, that's not with succubus, that is with your spouse, physical spouse. That's what sex, it was created by God to be and it needs to be there and we need to confront the demonic forces, we need to stand against the powers of darkness and break its grip over people's lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I know this is a weird video for some of you. Some of you are like, what the heck is this? This is crazy, you know, but the world of spirits is, is crazy world. It's, it's weird. It's wild and, um, and we don't seem to understand every single thing, but we follow the light, we follow the Word of God and we drive out demons in Jesus' mighty name.